um, before we start, um, just read through this disclaimer and then um, we should be good to go. Right, so this week we have some um, things ahead. We don't have much happening until Thursday, so in pretty much two days. Um, but we do have some PMIs um, in focus from the Europe um, side. So Eurozone, pretty much France, um, Eurozone in, in general, um, and some other smaller countries around the um, Euro area. Um, as well, we got um, Bank of Canada monetary policy statement. It's going to be really important to us um, should the, the CAD continue to be strong currency. Even though we having WTY price, rent prices um, dropping. And why is the US dollar so strong? Okay, so that's pretty much all the three topics we're going to be covering today. Um, and then, of course, answering the questions um, as usual we do. Um, but of course, if you have any questions um, in the middle, you know, in the ongoing um, circumstances of the, the, the meeting, you just uh, send the question through the chat and also look to the screen on my side, I will definitely answer um, the, that to you guys. First, um, I'd like to start looking at the calendar, the economic calendar, I think. Um, if you haven't watched my video yet um, from today on the YouTube channel, um, you're most likely missing some sort of content. So always watch those videos because they're really um, good, especially at the beginning of the week. So volatile markets ahead, key insights for the traders in this week. Um, if you haven't watched it yet, it's okay. You have time to have time to watch it. All right, so I think it's good for us to start looking at the economic calendar. As I say, we won't have much things until Thursday, but um, the data points that we have on Thursday, it's going to be pretty volatile for the euro side um, if we don't see any pullback. Euro dollar, euro dollar can probably continue to go lower and lower. So we're trading right now at 182.32. So that's a big drop more than that. 400 points, sorry, 400 pips um, point um, drop. Okay. So yesterday, Monday, we haven't had much things besides the China loan prime rate as well as the German PPI. Um, so the year over year came in below than expected. So that it's pretty well worse than expected. Then goes for the month of a month, worse than expected. Um, these underlines the strength, uh, sorry, the strength, um, the weakness of the euro. On this moment here, so we saw these happening at five o'clock. So I don't know what time is this. I think this is Australian time. Yeah, that's Australian time. So, um, we saw that happening around five. So uh, here you go. So here, and from there, we just so continuation, continuation, continuation of decline. Okay. So, um, this is underscoring underscoring the weakness of the euro dollar of the euro besides um the US dollar. Um, and then Tuesday today we want to have much things happening as we can all see. Um, Wednesday, we do have the ECB President Lagarde giving us a speech. Most likely, she will be talking about monetary policy and how they will proceed with it, um, what are the instances they're looking to do, etc., etc. So pretty um, important. It's going to be 1 a.m. in Australia time, so hopefully we can re-watch the replay and I can explain something for you guys on Thursday. Um, but I believe this will give us some insights on what are they thinking for the next um, meeting. Okay, so that would be, um, I think, this next month here. Yeah. So next month, on the next meeting of next month. 
as well as some other broader aspects on like um, outlook for projections, um, overall um, world economy, how's the world economy going as well, etc. Okay. Later on, 6.15 then we're going to have Lagarde's speech again, um, and then Lane and then Macau. Um, but, you know, Lane and Macau is not a big take at um, this stage of the market. We're only listening to Lagarde pretty much. Um, later on that day, we won't have anything, and then we're moving on to Thursday. Thursday, we already have the interest rates decision. <clears throat> From Canada, as I say, the Bank of Canada um, is on focus. Um, so definitely we should be looking to eat. We have Bank of Canada right now with the interest rates at the moment around well, it's not it's not showing here. Oh, there we go. 4.25%. Um, should they cut another 25? What are the expectations? Expectation is that they cut, wow, they cut 50 basis points, okay? So from 425 that they are right now to 3.75. Um, the main reason why the market is expecting these is because if we look to um, Canada inflation, okay, I think we have this here. Uh, yes, we do. Oopsie, there we go. Um, Canada. GDP, labor, prices, consumer. Why is it not showing? Business. Sorry, guys, I'm just. It was supposed to be here. <laughs> Money, investment, no, trade, on some trades, no, prices, inflation rate. There we go. Okay. So if we look to Canada inflation, um, and core inflation as well. So this is the year over year. The last one was 1.6%. Okay. So that's the last work. That's the last release. Um, the Month of a month is negative 0.4%, and the core inflation is at 1.6%. So they can they can do this, all right? They can most likely cut 50 basis points. Why? Because inflation is under control for Canada already. Okay. Um sorry guys. Um I just had to, I'm a little bit sick. I think you guys can probably notice from my voice. I just had to blow my nose, sorry. Um, yeah, so they're most likely going to cut 50 basis point. Um, because Not because they need it, it's because they, they can, and it's purely, um, you know, off from the inflation being 1.6%, as well as the core inflation being 1.6%. So when we have both of the inflations, meaning the core inflation at 1.6%, let me do a better 1.6%, and the normal inflation at 1.6% as well, I mean, year over year, okay, year over year, um, we have, the perfect scenario okay it's literally the perfect scenario when you have core inflation at um below two percent and then you have inflation year over year at following what the core inflation it is this is the literally the perfect scenario it's like it's the utopia word as we like to say because um sorry kind of inflation um Target, there you go. So we have a two percent. Okay, so one to two, one to three percent inflation target is expressed as year over year increase in total consumer price index. So the Bank of Canada has set um, inflations to be um, 
you know, between one to three percent, and uh, at the moment they are in one point six. So half of what the maximum they probably um, are able to take. Okay, so that's pretty good. Okay, this is this is really really good. And if we look to let's say USDK, we can see that the market has been liking it the past few days. Okay, the past hours. So, um, you know, like especially compared to the US dollar, we we seen so much strength from the US dollar, and it's one of the points I want to talk now. It's about why is the US dollar so strong? Okay. Because when we look to the dollar index, let me just grab it here. Everyone was saying, well, yesterday was the final day for, for US dollar to be up, and then we should go down. But in reality, if we look here, yes, it was coming lower. It didn't broke this bottom. Okay, like, yeah, you can sort of say that this is broken but it's not okay it's not so this is why i always like to count as um, of course we broke to the top Oops, sorry of course we broke to the top right there um and then we were coming lower and then we haven't break to the bottom very very funny right because most likely we will see if we break to the bottom a correction towards the first level that is right here. Where it is now? Yeah, there you go. Here. Okay. Second level that is right there. And most likely we will see a correction to this big level here. Okay. So that's the one hour time frame. So, uh, yes, but first we have to understand that they wrote this stop. So from here, oops, sorry. So from here, it broke to this part right, on the 24th. So pretty much um, 24th. Oh, sorry. On the 18, um, and now we are targeting this area. Okay, so yes, most likely we will continue to see an increase of the US dollar towards this level. All right, and um, I will explain, of course, why US dollar is so strong, and it's pretty simple. I want to show you a chart later, um, but it's uh, pretty simple how we're seeing um, US dollar coming so strong at the moment. Okay, now moving ahead, um, talked about Canada. Um, and then, yeah, so Thursday, pretty much it on the morning. Uh, moving on to the night, we, we will continue to, well, the best volatility will be happening on Friday um, after 5 p.m. And that will be um, a bunch of PMIs from um, Eurozone. Okay, we're going to have France, Germany. Uh, we're going to have, of course, Euro area, um, UK as well, and some other releases on USA. Um, Friday, uh, we don't have much things happening on Friday besides the um, um, the G Germany IFO expectation. So the pretty much to see if business are heating up or it's no. Um, lowering down this shows to us how the economy is so pretty good here the business climate um, what else Canada new kind of the retail sales yes yeah, somewhat important not that important because it's after already the Bank of Canada right decision if it was previously that could give us some sort of hint on what they would do um, but it's expected to come at 1% from the previous of 0.9 so a little dec a little uptick on um, core retail sales. Um, uh, sorry, uh, retail sales, Canada retail sales. Um, and then Saturday, it's just Saturday. Okay, perfect. Now let's have a look at why the US dollar is stronger. But first, before we go ahead, 
I want to listen to you guys. Do you guys sort of have any clue why the US dollar could be stronger? I just want to see if um you know maybe maybe you guys have some sort of um like hint no no one no one really wow okay right okay so let's go treat then um first let me open the pulley market website there we go. Um, and we will understand a little bit why. So here's the presidential election for 2024. And uh, we are looking for 63.9%. It was just, it was 8%, right? Just now it was 8%. Um, yeah, 62.7% now. Okay, I'm not crazy. Yeah, cool. Um, so Trump is pretty much at 67%, 64% um, ahead of Kamala Harris, that is 31%. So really interesting how things are moving because um, let me try to zoom in at the one week time frame. Perfect. So we can see that Trump was... 55 against 44. Trump was pretty much 10% ahead of Kamala Harris. So that's not much because if we look at the one month, he was losing for Kamala Harris by pretty much 10%. Okay, somewhere between 7% actually. But anyways, very close to 10%. And then he takes the lead. Um 49, 49, and then again, 49, 50, 50, and then it goes to 54, 44, 45, okay? It jumps pretty, pretty um, high from 54 Donald Trump to 45 Kamala Harris. And on that day, October 8, okay, so we can see from October 5, let's count from October 5 that Trump was winning, to October 8, look at what happened with the GXY. October 5, let me just grab this um, vertical line. Coordinate style, oh, I have to change it here. October. Five, two. When was that? Yeah, to October 8. There we go, right here. Okay. Okay, that haven't had much effect actually in the market, but if we look later, these have, you know, open it widely. And right now, it's like literally very, very smooth. Before, it was just, you know, up and down, ups and downs, and now it's really smooth. So Trump is winning the pool. Does that mean that Trump will win the election? No, it's not because of that, okay? It doesn't mean that. But I want to show a nice chart. Let me just bring it over here. That's from a Mufji, Mufji Bank. Um we can see that um, on the on the gray line is the US dollar index spot, so TXY, and on the red line is the US um, poly market who will win the 2024 US presidential election, Donald Trump. Um, so here on the left is the percentage of Trump, and here on the left, on the right, is um, US dollar index, DXY price, okay? So we can see that um, when Donald Trump was losing, okay, from uh, July 1st, oh, actually 1st of August, sorry, 1st of August to 16th of August, we saw this really big down move on the US dollar index, 
Okay. Later, we had this sort of consolidation. Okay, in the month of August, we can see here, nothing happened right there. It was always one, two, other. So really not much uh, was happening there. And then on the 1st of October, we saw this huge upstrike on Donald Trump um, right here. We saw this huge up move to Donald Trump winning the, the, the pool. And then we saw US dollar going up as well. So there is a big correlation with this. Um, so there is a big correlation with this um, that we can potentially look to trade. Okay. Now, is this a, let's say, best way to understand why the US dollar getting stronger? Yes and no, because yes, this does take majority of the reasons, but we can't forget as well as Zod was is exactly saying right now. It's um, it's because as well of the NFP, the CPI, and the PPI data that was always strong, and also we cannot shy away the fact that market likes Trump. That's exactly correct. So, market likes Trump, and Trump does a sort of a to say that he prioritizes the market by he prioritizes the market and over socialism so he's much more a capitalist um and the market prefers capitalist and not um socialism of course as we all know so pretty simple to understand um a few few of the reasons why um but yeah let's let's move on right now Okay, um, so any more questions on that? I think it was pretty much clear, right? No questions, okay. Now, let's go to your solar cat here. So, um, I'm expecting that the, the Bank of Canada will follow what the um, RBNZ did, the, the, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Um and we'll do an actually fifty base points rate cut in um in this week. So on Thursday, if I'm not wrong, is on Thursday. Um, the cat dollar would probably weaken further. Okay, if um the Bank of Canada also um do a signaling that that he open to another fifty base points rate cut at the final policy meeting on this year that is going to be in December for um, Bank of Canada. Um, the, the rate market is currently priced more in favor of a 50 base points cut next um, next meeting. So that's um, this Thursday. Um, then followed by a 25 base points rate cut in December. Um, so they're expecting a very dovishness and then a sort of neutral sense because when you do a 50 and then you do a 25, you, you're like, oh, okay, they're not that um, bearish. Um, the ECB has already joined the re, re, sorry, um, Reserve Bank of New Zealand um, in speeding up sort of the pace of the um, easing cycle when they deliver uh, the first back-to-back -back 25 rate cut um, last week. So the, the update was, you know, forward guidance from the ECB and um, subsequent to what a Bloomberg um, article that I was reading was saying that the, they've indicated that another 25 base points rate cut is likely to be delivered at the final policy meeting of this year in December. However, the ECB is not ready, in my opinion, to do um, a cut for um, for um, 25 base points cut. So quickly, the, the RBNZ, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand and the Bank of Canada will be delivering um, most likely another 50 base points cut, which was not discussed as a policy decision in the last meeting. 
um, so the ECB remains very um, comfortable sticking to gradual 25 base points cut. Um, and the Bank of Canada, sorry, um, rate cut at the upcoming policy meeting, even as risks begin to tilt to the downside for the inflation outlook in um in 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 uh, CPI for uh, CPI for Europe, Just, um, but yeah. So my expectations is a cut, fifty base points cut, from Bank of Canada. Um, most likely we will see um a weakening of the Canada dollar, and we can potentially see a higher. Let me move this. Sorry, let me move this to daily time frame. Okay, we could potentially see a break through, oops, sorry, through these levels of um, USD CAD. Now, if Trump continues to win into the pool, okay, that's the um, first thing. If Trump continues to win through the pool, we will continue to see a stronger US dollar, okay? If Trump sort of had back and, you know, on a difference of 2 to 3% from Kamala Harris, we will see a retracement on the US dollar index. What I think it's most likely and more probable is a continuation of Trump winning. Okay, Trump has been done a really good marketing campaign at this moment, you know, going to McDonald's and... Um, it's really funny, but it is what it is. Um, he's doing pretty well. People are sort of noticing that um, for the economy, Trump is much better for the economy than Kamala Harris is. Um, therefore, they will continue to have more faith on Donald Trump than what um, in, in Kamala Harris. Okay. Um, this will, of course, drag US dollar continuation to up uptrend. Okay. Now, for those who trade euro dollar like me, um, let me just zoom out a little bit from it. Um, it's a very good scenario, euro dollar. As they said, I was expecting on the one hour time frame here, I was expecting a down move from here and then an up move from there. But uh, we haven't had that. Um, if we continue to see, most likely we will have targeting those two boxes here and here. And then from there, we will move to other, other points. But um, first one, those two. Okay, most likely. Um, I'm not too, <laughs> as I say, I'm not too safe on having a correction at this moment. Most likely we will continue to, sh to see a decline towards this level of 107, 800, 107, 1079 is most likely to take profit. And even if we break through this level down here, we will continue to see down pressure on the euro to 10722. Okay. So, yeah, in the end, most likely we will continue to see um, more and more pressure to the downside for Iridol. Okay. So I'm long on it. Unfortunately, I have some losses running at the moment, um, but it's all part of the game. And um, yeah, so let me just zoom out of it. Just a second. Well, okay. Even if we look at it, right? Um, from the top of the range to the bottom of the range, we've broke to this top, tried to do a correction, continue, and then we haven't broke to this top. So market collapses. So likely we go to the bottom of this range again. We do have a bigger range, that is this one, but I don't think the market can possibly go back to this area. Okay. Um, most likely 107 would be the stopping point um, without correction. Otherwise, if it corrects, yes. 
we can continue to see the liberate uh, pressure to the downside. All right. Okay. Any questions, guys? No questions? All right. Um, I think we can finish from now. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm not feeling very well. Um, just a little bit um, sick at the moment. Hopefully, it can be better on Thursday and I can deliver a bit more for you guys. Um, but I, I thought it was going to be good to be here. At least talk to everyone and answer anyone's questions. So um, hopefully to... I could, you know, give some sort of um, understanding of what's going to happen this week. All right, guys. Um, thank you so much. Have a great week ahead. I talk to everyone on Thursday. And if you have any questions, please just message me on Telegram or put your question put your question on the comments of the last video, and I will have a look at that. Thanks, Wits. Thanks, um, Zodward. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Morris, Bray, Barry. Sorry. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Quick recovery. Yes, let's try to. Thank you. Bye bye.